my car, and maybe it was his brother, to put her in the back seat. How do you like them apples? The snow was falling, that heavy, heavy March snow whipped. The windshield wipers were going. Swish, swish. The snow was so heavy, it was coming over the fenders like we were in a boat. The wind was blowing. We were following two tracks on the freeway from Jamestown, North Dakota. We just went through Moorhead, headed for St. Cloud. The road was packed with snow at least two feet deep. All there was were two tracks from the semi. We're following it. We come up upon these two young ladies stranded their cars swerved off the road. So I said, Mad Dog, we should help these girls. He said, yes, we should. And whoever was in the back seat, I think it might have been George Clooney now that I think about it. He said, yes, maybe we should help these girls. So we stopped the car right in the middle of the road. We rolled down the windows and we say, would you young ladies, do you need some help? Can we give you a lift? Can we do something to help you? And they looked in the car. They saw the mad dog. They looked in the back seat and they saw the butcher or George Clooney, whoever it was. And then they looked at me. And they went running back through that heavy snow back to their car. The last thing I saw looking through the rear view mirror, a semi stopped and they, they ran and got his semi and hopefully they got home safely. But they weren't about to get to that particular car that night. When I first started in wrestling, I had a manager, and uh, you people learned learned to to know him and to love him. He had a nickname up here. I think it was called uh, the Weasel, Bobby the Brain Hannon. Well, we were working down in the Dick Pearl Wilbur Schneider Run territory in Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Chicago, uh, Fort Wayne, all those. All those towns like that. And we, uh, we were down there and, and Bobby had done something wrong and he's going to be punished. And he had to wrestle Dave McCagney, another wrestler from Canada. He had a bear. What's that bear's name? Victor. Victor the bear. A big bear. Getting older and older. A huge bear. And Bobby Heenan, usually a fearless person, did not want to wrestle the bear. So he refused to wrestle the bear. But he was supposed to wrestle the bear. And I, being his partner at the time, he was my he was my manager partner. So he said, well, if you won't wrestle the bear, you have to wrestle the bear. So I said, okay, I'll wrestle the bear. Well, the bear, I don't know if you know many bears, but they're natural wrestlers. They got a, they're tall, but they have a very low center of gravity. They're like pear shaped. So it's really hard to knock them off balance. And they also hook you like with, they pull you in. They don't grab you and pull you in. They hook you and pull you in. And pretty soon you're, you're in a pair hug. And you're in big trouble. I got to shake so the microphone works. <laughs> anyway, I get in the ring and uh, the bear got a muzzle on, so it's sort of safe to let you, unless you see that your your uh, fingers get caught in his mouth because he, he did get a couple of guys' fingers at different times. Snapped them right off. Bit them right off. Anyway, nice. I didn't let him do that. Though. Anyway, anyway. Keep shaking it. Anyway, I get in the ring with a pair of in my corner. 
and everybody in the rest of the band. The band does several things with the, that are uh, 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 a joy to watch if you're a fan. Not so great when you're in the ring, but anyway. I'd rush at him, he'd drop back on his haunches, and he'd, he would uh, uh, give me a flip over, flip over, and he'd, if I got behind him, he'd reach back, and he'd, he'd pull me over the top. He did the, all this stuff, and I kept attacking him, and, and doing various things that I did. And then, all of a sudden, when the bear didn't want to play anymore, Old Dave McKinney would undo his muzzle, and then it was time for the Baron to leave. So I would get out of the ring, and the match would be over, and they did this cute little thing. They had a stool, like a piano stool I saw one her earlier. A piano stool, and they put it in the ring, and the Baron would sit on that, that piano stool. They'd give him a Coca-Cola. They'd take the cap off. And actually, it already had been filled with chocolate milk, I learned. Anyway, the bear would take that Coca-Cola, sit back, and he'd drink it down. <laughs> and that was, that was the end of the, the thing. At that time, Bobby Heenan would sneak over the, the rope, in between the ropes, and he'd sneak up behind the bear. And when he got close to the bear, he'd wind up like he was going to kick a field goal. And he'd whack the bear in the behind. Aww. And the bear would go, woo! Didn't really, bears are pretty tough. It didn't really hurt the bear that much. But, yeah. So he did, he did that the first night. The next night he wrestled in another times. Same thing, I wrestled the bear. Got the match over. The bear was drinking his Coca-Cola. He gets finished with his Coca-Cola, everybody's going crazy because it's really a cute trick. And here comes, here comes Bobby Hayden, over the rope, sneaking up on the bear. Boom! Wax him in the behind again with his foot. The bear goes, <clears throat> Okay. So about the third or fourth night, I don't, I'm not sure about that. Bobby Hayden sneaks into the ring, comes up behind that bear, and he's getting, getting ready to give him a, uh, another boot, boot in the bottom. And the bear, sensing what's about to happen, goes, Whoa! And he spins around. And Bobby Hayden's like this. I've never seen a man jump so high and run so fast as poor Bobby the Weasel Hayden. <laughs> the, the moral of the story is there is a moral of the story. Anyway. Uh, Ever. Let's see. That's enough. And that is all the people need to know. Woo! Woo! Thank you very much. And a big round of applause, everybody, for AWA Legend, Baron Ben Lashley. He's funny. He is funny. Yeah. The Baron is here signing autographs, photos, 49